Where are my German Shepherd fans? Let me ask you, when you picture a German Shepherd, does this come to mind? Maybe you were hoping for something a little more like this? You're probably tuning in because you want a dog who can have a great time when you're going hiking or camping, get along great with the kids, deter any suspicious strangers from entering your house, and can chill when you want to relax. And maybe you think a German Shepherd is the one for the job. Well, I can guarantee that any dog will do any of that but it sounds like a unicorn to me. But we can try to get you close to that reality by doing some research in breeds and committing to a training protocol that uses positive and fear-free reinforcement. But let's dive a little bit deeper into German Shepherds today. Now, if you've got one or are thinking about one, this video is gonna give you some must-have information. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Whether this is your first time watching or it's your 99th time, you're gonna love it. You know what else you're gonna love? When you subscribe. Just hit that bell and you're gonna be doing us both a favor. All right, the German Shepherd is the second most popular breed out of about 193 AKC registered breeds. Now, a lot of this popularity comes from a small puppy who was rescued from a breeding kennel in France. This actually took place in the middle of a combat zone during World War I. Now, at the end of the war, a man named Lee Duncan brought the puppy back to his hometown of Los Angeles. Duncan trained this puppy, and this dog went on to become one of the most famous dogs in Hollywood. Rin Tin Tin. Rin Tin Tin starred in dozens of movies and was so popular he often received 10,000 fan letters a week and earned up to about $2,000 a week. This is like mm, $26,000 a week with today's inflation. That sounds like a good gig. Where do I sign pickles up? So thanks Rin Tin Tin for introducing the German Shepherd to the USA. So to understand the German Shepherd's unique traits, we need to go into history a little bit more. So the German Shepherd was originally bred to herd flocks in harsh climates and their medium length double coat fits the job perfectly. Now this coat protects the dog from rain and snow, is also resistant picking up burrs and dirt. So during World War I, the German Shepherd also served as a Red Cross dog, and a messenger, and a rescuer, a guard, a supply carrier, and a lookout. That's a lot of jobs, but German Shepherds were good at them. Now, German Shepherds are part of the AKC herding group. This is a breed that was primarily created for working, not just companionship. This breed has also been shaped into recent history for protection and police work. So keeping both of these things in mind, we can gather that most German Shepherd lines were intentionally bred for having a low tolerance to stress and frustration, which results in a higher reaction to stimuli. Now, those traits work well in protection and police work, but can sometimes be frustrating if you have a family dog. Some examples of lower tolerance to stress and frustration for a family dog might look like this. You're out walking and another dog owner starts heading your way. Their dog starts barking and your German Shepherd quickly becomes agitated. Now, this breed tends to be more reactive in this and other situations situations that they might encounter frequently while out exercising. Now, this includes sensitivity to other people and noises and even other animals. Now, another example of this lower tolerance to stress and frustration might take place at home. So in an attempt to solve a puzzle toy, you might see a German Shepherd start barking at the toy out of frustration, sooner than you might see another breed do this. Now, there's definitely ways that you can work to combat these reactions, but you're gonna need to have some pretty good knowledge of dog training and canine science. I'll go into that a little bit more in just a moment. So although many of these dogs were actually bred for this hair-triggered work like police dogs and protection, some distinguished breeders have been and folding in specific traits that would make a better family dog. So when choosing any dog, it's extremely important to look at the family line of the dog, not just the breed. This research can help you understand more about the dog's likely temperament. And knowing the family line is so important for physical health too. Let's talk about the ideal owner for a German Shepherd. So earlier I listed what criteria you might be looking for in a dog, but let's talk about what kind of human would be good in this relationship. Even if you find a breeder without working line German Shepherd puppies, you should still be an experienced handler with a solid understanding of canine behavior. Now, I 
really recommend that owners of shepherds be people with dog training experience. I personally think this is a breed that really needs more than just people who've had dogs, and especially if the owners have only had small dogs or ones that didn't need much training. Now, if you don't have a lot of dog training experience and you're thinking of getting a German Shepherd, now is a good time to start learning about canine science and behavior. And if you're getting a young puppy, I can help you with that as part of our online course. Now, another tip I recommend for owners of German Shepherds is to plan for the dog to have some sort of job. Now, I won't say never, but it's rare to see a German Shepherd thrive in a situation where he doesn't have a job. Now, these dogs have been bred to make some critical decisions and they are good at it. Now, when they aren't given an opportunity to do what they love, they can get frustrated and this comes out in unwanted behavior. So please think about what job you've planned for him or her or what kind of trainer you're planning to work with. Of course, positive reinforcement, fear-free training is critical. You can learn why in this video. German Shepherds are also extremely agile and have a lot of energy. Does that sound like you too? If not, it will be good to plan out how your dog will get out that mental and physical energy. Finally, let's think about other living beings in the house, such as other animals and children. German Shepherds can make great family dogs and interact nicely with each other and other animals, but you must be prepared to properly introduce them to promote a healthy relationship moving forward. It's ideal if the children are old enough to truly understand the boundaries that they must have around the dog, and especially how to be an inviter, not an invader. I actually discuss more about kids and dogs in this video, and all of those tips will be tenfold for a German Shepherd household. Now, one more tip on owning a German Shepherd. Don't get a Shepherd for looks or for status. I know firsthand how cool it feels to confidently walk along with a German Shepherd at the end of your leash. But dogs are not status symbols, and if you don't have experience with working line breeds, I highly recommend that you don't get one. Let's talk about that trait you might be looking for, protection. Most clients I've worked with over the years have told me the reason they got a Shepherd was because they wanted a protection dog. German Shepherds are definitely bred for protection. The thing with protection dogs is that they are highly trained but they have difficulty deciphering between a stranger that needs to be stopped and maybe a family member messing around doing the exact same behaviors. The dog can't always and easily distinguish between who you want them to protect and who you don't want them to react to. So for example, if a dog is trained to react to a hand coming at you, what if that was a child or another family member that makes the same motions towards you that an attacker might? This actually happens most often with dogs that are trained to protect. So once you've trained the dog to protect, you now have a duty and a responsibility to keep that dog from being put in situations where they can't easily determine the good from the bad. So since they tend to be more reactive, it's imperative that you work to desensitize them to things like sights and sounds and people and places and things. Oh. <laughs> and definitely do this positively and as early as possible. We actually recommend this kind of exposure training for all young puppies, even before all their vaccinations are complete. But due to a German Shepherd's low tolerance for stress, it's even more important that they're exposed to new things in a positive way during this critical imprint period. Now that time frame is from about birth to 16 weeks of age. This video can get you started on that. So responsible breeders breed for sound temperament good health, and good physical build. Unfortunately, many breeders these days breed for looks. Don't even consider the long-term effects of poor breeding. Check out this video for more advice on how to find a good breeder and what questions to ask them that'll give you more great information. So before I talk about medical conditions that you might wanna be aware of, I'm gonna give you another minute to subscribe. And if you really, really love this content, feel free to show your support with a super thanks. My team and I work really hard to put together these great videos for you each week. Maybe a small token of appreciation will help this great content to continue week after week. All right, back to the shepherd. German shepherd puppies are truly the cutest, but don't forget that these guys will grow. They grow to be about 24 to 26 inches tall if they're male and about 22 to 24 inches if female. Males are likely gonna tap out at about 65 to maybe 90 pounds and females between 50 and 70 pounds. They are big and strong, so make sure your training is top notch from puppyhood. The life expectancy is about seven to 10 years. One thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind when considering a German Shepherd 
are some common medical issues with this breed. So many shepherds have inherited hip dysplasia. Hip dysplasia is a condition where the femur doesn't actually fit well into the pelvic socket of the hip joint. Hip dysplasia can exist with or without physical symptoms. Some dogs show pain and avoidance on one or both rear legs. And as the dog ages, arthritis can develop. So x-ray screening for hip dysplasia can be done if you wanna check if it's prevalent in your dog. Or your vet can tell you what other signs to watch out for. Now another condition to watch out for is elbow dysplasia. That is an inheritable condition common to large breed dogs. Specialists believe it's caused by different growth rates of three bones that make up the dog's elbow. Now, your vet may recommend surgery to correct the problem or medication to control the pain. Now, the next part is good advice for all dogs, but especially for German Shepherds. Do not let your puppy do activities such as running and jumping for extended periods of time until they're fully grown. So. Make sure that if you want to do some physical activity or repetitive activities with your German Shepherd, you clear it with your vet first. And you might want to budget for any joint supplements your vet recommends to you. They can be costly, but extremely important. Now a dog with a low stress threshold who is in chronic pain is a recipe for disaster. And another common condition in German Shepherds and many large dogs is gastric dilation vulvalis. You've probably heard this as bloat. This is a serious affliction that often affects deep-chested dogs. Bloat in dogs is different from what humans experience and is much more serious. Dogs' stomachs can actually flip and require surgery to fix it. This is more common in larger breeds like Great Danes and less so in smaller dogs like Chihuahuas, but it can still happen. I actually recommend a buffer of about 30 to 60 minutes before or after meals before allowing your puppy to run and exercise. This includes walks. So for more information on safe exercise for your puppy, including how often and how much they should exercise, you can check out this great video. I hope all this information didn't sound like I'm being a negative Nelly. I am a dog trainer and I'm here for education. I think that's why you're here too, right? I really wanna give you a realistic picture of what it can take to own a German Shepherd so that you can choose wisely and your dog will thrive under your care. And I'm sure there are exceptions to this advice that I'm giving you here today, but I'm also sure that some of you are gonna remember a calm, quiet, low energetic German Shepherd in your life. Yes, they do exist. You just need to do your due diligence before you get one. Like I said, understanding the family lines of the puppy you are considering can tell you a lot about the dog you're gonna get. Spend some time with the mother and the father of the puppy to see if the offspring is gonna be a good fit. Finally, I just want you to think about the training that will go into a dog like this. Now, if you're like me and training is a hobby, okay, <laughs> for me, it's a career too. This breed will be a great fit. Now, if you're an information junkie and you love to learn and you love to spend time working with your dog on new skills and behaviors, then this could be a great relationship for the both of you. I don't mean to discourage you from getting a German Shepherd. I only wanna help you do what's best for you and the dog. One final tip. If you are thinking of getting one, or you already have one, consider my online course at the pro level. This program is gonna be a great resource of information and support and guidance as you raise your new best friend. It can be much easier to develop good habits from a young age than to try to break old habits. So let's work together to get started on the right path. In the comments below, tell me, if you have a German Shepherd, what's his or her name? 